At this point, you've given it a really good scrub down, uh, so we might as well start putting it back together. So we're going to remove the rubbing alcohol from our workstation, and then I'll step us through screwing this back together in the proper order. This is a very straightforward process. We're just going to reverse what we did previously, um, starting with the back screws back here. Gonna grab your Phillips head screwdriver, uh, something with a bit of a longer neck. I wasn't using my toolkit, uh, my electronics toolkit previously, but it makes it a lot easier to get into areas like this. Instead of using a big chunky screwdriver, uh, tweezers obviously also help. It's going to help me guide this screw back down to where it belongs. And of course, the goal here is to gently screw this in right until you reach the point of resistance and then stop. You're just getting the motherboard uh, securely fastened back to the shell. You don't want to strip anything. Regular motherboard placement screw, not those long ones. A uh, little bit smaller. It goes up in the top right hand corner. Let's put that in. Next, we want to secure the motherboard further by screwing in these long silver screws back into the left and right of the 62 pin connector. Now we want to go back to our little shield here that we had and put this back in. So to do that, this little hole here can be your guide. This is where the reset switch goes. So we're just going to very gently place it back down like this over top of it. You'll see the screw holes line up. Um, the top of this also has some teeth that will go into your connector plate down at the bottom. So use those things as guides, the screw holes, the reset switch, and you want to lift it up and just push it right back down into the connector like so. Next, we want to screw this back down and secure it. So go back to your pile of screws. You're gonna have a couple shorties and we're going to screw those back in. Next thing you want to do is take your controller port ribbon cable and get that back in. So just gently stick it down like that and wiggle it in. like so. All right, this part is a little bit trickier. Uh, we're going to reinsert the eject bar. Uh, this is the switch, of course, that you push up and down to get your cartridges ejected. Uh, you're going to get this spring back into place, which can be a little bit tricky. Uh, it sits in here. I'm going to try to make it as visible as possible. First thing you want to do is align the spring into the proper holes. So I'll bring zoom this up a little bit for you. You can see the spring has a uh, little 90 degree turns on it. You want to hook one of those holes down into the bottom like that. And as you can see, the center of hard to see because of the zoom function on the camera. I'll try to fix it for you. As you can see, if you align the spring with that hole, the bar is going to be able to go right through the center. Once you get your bar all the way through into this hole, you want to get this part of the spring 
looped to the front and that's what's going to give you your spring action back. Uh, I'm also going to link a uh, article down in the comments below just so you can see how to do this. Again, it's difficult to do it by yourself. It's much easier with a friend, but it is possible to do by yourself as well. I had to fiddle around with it for a couple minutes, but I got it done. If you took your power switch out like I did, you're going to want to reassemble that. So it actually has some guide hooks, which makes it super simple to install. Uh, little plastic gray hooks, as you can see, this will sit right on top of the hooks.